What is up, young chemists? Mr. Rosen here. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is looking at chemical equations. How do we write a chemical equation? What are the different parts of a chemical equation? And how do you balance chemical equations? And then also, if you do see a chemical equation, uh, what are some ways that we can categorize them? Uh, what are the different um, types of reactions? We're going to have five types of reactions we will identify here today. So, a chemical equation is a way to represent a chemical reaction. And the uh, just sort of typical conventional setup during a chemical reaction, existing molecules break apart, the atoms rearrange, and new bonds are formed. You start with stuff on the left, these are called the reactants, and you end up with stuff on the right, these are called the products. So reactant bonds break apart, atoms rearrange, product bonds form and there's usually some change in energy between the two and energy is either absorbed or released. Now, during a chemical reaction, atoms are not created or destroyed. So whatever atoms you start with, you are going to end up with. Right? All atoms present on one side of the reaction arrow must be accounted for on the other side. This is known as the law of conservation of mass. So you know, if you start with carbon and oxygen, you're going to end up with carbon and oxygen. And not only that, but if you end, you know, if you started with three carbons and four oxygens, you're going to end with three carbons and four oxygens. The only difference is how those atoms are going to be connected to each other. So making sure that your equation obeys the law of conservation of mass is called balancing the chemical equation. A key thing to remember is that when you are balancing a chemical equation, the identities of the compounds cannot be changed in order to balance the equation, meaning you can't change the subscripts. Okay, You can only change how many of it you have. And to do that, we use a multiplier, which is called a coefficient, which will be a big number placed before each uh, species. Now. I'll probably be using this red pen when I do this, but in general, I encourage you to use a pencil when you are balancing equations because it is done by inspection, sort of trial and error. You go back and forth and back and forth from one side to the other. So I have uh, three example problems here for balancing a chemical equation. I'll work the first one and then I will pause the video and give you the opportunity to uh, try balancing the others. Okay. Now the way to balance an equation is uh, what I like to do is I draw an arrow underneath the arrow and I list what elements are on each side. So on this side we have SR, we have O, we have H, we have uh, Fe, and we have Cl. Those are the elements. Now on the other side we have the same elements. Sr, O, H, Fe, and Cl. And I like to list them in the same order, okay? Even though you know, that's not necessarily, you know, on this side it's SROH, but on this side you don't necessarily see them, but the same elements are there. And then what you do is you count how many of each element are on each side. So here we have one SR, and on this side we have one SR. So right now the SRs are balanced. We have, the, you know, we start with one SR, we end with one SR. That makes sense. Okay, if I count how many oxygens I have, because this is inside the parentheses and there's a two, that means there's two of whatever's inside the parentheses. So there are two oxygens to start with. And if you look over here on the right side, we actually have three oxygens. 
So looking at that, you should recognize this is not a balanced equation, and this doesn't make any sense. If you start with two oxygens, how are you going to end up with three oxygens? You know, where, where did the other oxygen come from? Did it just like poof, like appear out of thin air? No, that it can't happen. Okay, if you start with two, you have to end with two. Or if we're ending with three, that means you actually started with more than two. So this is an unbalanced equation. First, we need to find out how many of each element we have. So here we have two hydrogens. We have three hydrogens on this side. We have one iron and three chlorines. Jeez. We also have one iron and two chlorines. So if you look at these, if you compare them, if you have the same numbers of each type of element on both sides of the equation, then it's balanced. But right now, if you look at this, it's not balanced because the numbers are different. Now, you might say, oh, well, Mr. Rosen, this is 3 and this is 3. So if we want to change O and H to 3, why don't we just change this 2 right here and make it SRO3, OH3. And that's what I was talking about earlier above. Okay, If you change the subscript, if I turn this into SROH3, then it would be a different substance, okay? Not that, but it wouldn't be a neutral compound. But uh, you cannot change the subscripts. So we're not going to change any of the subscripts. All we're going to do is add coefficients in front of them, which changes how many we have. Now, <clears throat> we're dealing with like a bunch of threes and twos, so I can already tell we're going to have some common multiple things going on, which will be six. Um, but let's start thinking about this. If, if there are three OHs on this side, the only way I could get, uh, well, I guess I'll say this another way, is because this has a subscript of two, no matter what number I put in front of this, I'm always going to have an even number of oxygens and an even number of hydrogens, right? If I have a 1 here, then I get these numbers. If I put a 2 here, meaning I have 2 of this, then I would have 4 and 4. If I put a 3 there, I'd have 6 and 6. So no matter what number I put in front of this, I'm going to have an even number of these. And as long as these are even, it will never balance with this odd unless I put an even coefficient in front of it. So I'm going to start by putting a 2 in front of this. And now this could be wrong, so I might be scribbling it out. But if I put a 2 in front of this, that now gives me, instead of 3 oxygens, that now gives me 6 oxygens. And instead of 3 hydrogens, that now gives me 6 hydrogens. And it also changes my irons. I now have 2 irons. Now you might say, well, Mr. Rosen, that wasn't very helpful um, because these are all different now. But if this is 6 and this is 6, you can think, what number could you put here in order to get 6 oxygens or 6 hydrogens? And the answer is 3. right? If you put a 3 here, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, so this is now 6, and this is now 6. And it also changed our SR. So that's now 3. So our oxygens and hydrogens are balanced. But now I have 3 SRs on the left side, which means I need to have 3 SRs on the right side. So I'm going to put a 3 in front of this. Now I have 3 SRs, 3 SRs, 6 O's, 6 O's, 6 H's, 6 H's. We're starting to get closer. Putting this 3 there actually gives me now 6 chlorines. So this changes to 6. The only thing that's not balanced is now Fe. I have 2 Fe's on this side. I need to have 2 on this side. Now if I put a 2 here, look, not only do I now have 2 irons, but now I have 6 chlorines. 
dun 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 three three six 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 two two six six balanced chemical equation folks not only do we have the same elements on both sides we have the same number of each type of element on both sides and what I did there is the process of balancing it's not a one-size-fits-all approach it's count how many are on the left count how many are on the right recount change the coefficient recount and you go back and forth and you always want to have the lowest integers for your coefficients right you can't if you split this in half to one these would be one and a half so these are the lowest integers you can have to balance the equation now I sort of started to cramp up on the next problem but uh, you can pause the video if you'd like and try to balance these two equations, the next two equations on your own, and then I'm about to work through them. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to put an arrow here, and I'm going to list my elements. And maybe I'll list them in two columns so I don't run into the next one so much. So I have H, I have S, and I have O, and then there's B, A, and more O's and H's. So that's actually it. So H... S O B A. Now we do have, you know, see how you have H here and O here, and then H here and O here. You don't need to list those separately. You're counting up the total number of those elements. So, you know, for hydrogen, it's not just two, it's two here, but there's also two here. So you have four hydrogens. This is four oxygens plus the two over here, which is six one sulfur and one barium. On this side we have two hydrogens here, one Ba, one S, and then oxygen there's four here plus another one so it's five. So you look, do we have the same number of each type of element on both sides? Nope. Now, uh, How we're going to solve this one, we might need to do some back and forth, but the left side has hydrogen in multiple places, and we have four, and the right side only has hydrogen in one place, which is right here. So if we want to have four hydrogens, we could put a two here. That would give us four hydrogens. And it would actually now give us two oxygens plus four would give us six. Oh my goodness. Look, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, one sulfur, one sulfur, six oxygens, six oxygens, one BA, one BA. That's it. Ta-da! Balanced equation. All we needed was a coefficient here. Now notice that I left these blank. If there's no coefficient in front of something, that's the same as a 1, okay? It's the same as a 1. But we don't typically draw 1s because the fact that it's there means you have one of it. If the coefficient was a 0, that would mean you have none of it and it wouldn't actually be there at all. So if it's there, you have one of it. If you need more than one of it, you do coefficients, okay? So I just wrote the 1s in just to show you, but in, in general, you don't write the 1s. Next problem, we have C, we have H, and we have O. On this side we have C, we have H, and we have O. Let's scoot this up a little bit. This is balancing a chemical equation. So, the 
Next thing we're going to do, do is count. We have two carbons, two hydrogens, two oxygens. This is one carbon, two hydrogens, and there's two plus one is three oxygen. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's try this out. If there are two carbons on the left side, we're going to need to have two carbons on the right side. So I'll put a 2 here, and that will change this to 2. But now that I put a 2 here, that gives me 4 plus this 1 which means I can already see that this is not going to work. So here is a, here is a tip. This would balance our, our carbons, okay? But then when I count my oxygens, that's four plus one would be five oxygens. On this side, the only place you have oxygen is right here. And because it has a subscript of two, that means that no matter what I put in front of this, I'm going to have an even number of oxygens. So this equation will never be balanced unless I have an even number of oxygens on the right side. So that means I need to have an even coefficient in front of this. So I'm going to erase this because we're going to need to go bigger. And this is the nature of it. You have to go back and forth a little bit. So I'm going to put a 2 here because that would give me an even number of oxygens. So just to recount, I would now have 4 hydrogens and I would now have 4 oxygens. Now if I want to balance the hydrogens, I would put a 2 in front of this. that would balance my hydrogens. That would change my carbons to four. So I balanced the hydrogens. And now to get four carbons on this side, I'm gonna put a four here. That would give me four carbons. And now my carbons are balanced my hydrogens are balanced, and the last thing we're going to do is balance the oxygen. And because I have even coefficients here, I'm going to be able to do it because 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 right, is 10 oxygens. And I can come back to this side. What coefficient would I need in order to get 10? 5. 4, 4, 4, 4, 10, 10. Balanced equation. 2, 5, 4, 2. And that's the nature of it. You just kind of go back and forth. There's not a, you know, a shortcut. You have to count them. You have to recount them, change the coefficient. It's good to think about the even-odd stuff like I did there. And like I said, it's best to use a pencil. I'm doing this so that red is a little bit more visible, but uh, using a pencil is good because you're going to be writing and counting and recounting and rewriting. All right, so that's balancing a chemical equation. Now, the next thing I want to look at is types of chemical reactions. Okay, now this is a summary table of types of reactions. And there are five types that we're going to have in this class, which are combustion, single displacement, double displacement, synthesis, and decomposition. Okay, now I might do them in sort of different order than what's listed here, but synthesis means to bring together or combine multiple things into one. Okay, so if you have two or more compounds combining to form one, like here you have something plus something turning into a compound, that's synthesis. Decomposition is the opposite of that. It's 
a compound breaking down into its individual parts and pieces. So this is synthesis and this is decomposition. Now a combustion reaction, it's some carbon compound, it's usually some combination of C's and H's, okay, and I'll put X there or Y there, whatever, it's, so it's usually a hydrocarbon, but it could also have an oxygen in it. But that carbon compound reacts with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. So the only thing that changes is the identity of the carbon compound. So this could be uh, CH4, it could be, uh, it could be like C3H8, right? It could be gasoline, it could be a lot of different things. That The carbon compound could change. But if it's reacting with oxygen to give you CO2 and water, that's a combustion reaction. We harness combustion reactions to produce heat and do work. Now, single and double displacement are probably the most confusing, but if you look at the generic equation, it's pretty straightforward. You have, in a single displacement reaction, an element switching places with one of the elements in a compound. And when you have a compound, it's always positive and then negative, usually metal and then non-metal. And in this case, you have A switching places with B to form AC. So this is a metal and it's replacing another metal. And so you end up with, instead of an element and a compound, you end up with an element and a compound, but the element has switched places or displaced B. That's why I call it single displacement. Now double displacement is two compounds and it's positive and positive, negative, positive, negative. The positive section of one switches places with the positive section of the other. So A and C are going to switch places. And now A is going to be with D and C is going to be with B. So you start with two compounds and you end with two compounds, but the way they are connected has rearranged. Acid-base reactions do this. Uh, typically, precipitation reactions do this as well. We'll learn more about those later in the year. Okay, so these are our uh, examples um, if, uh, if we're looking at um, if we're looking at this from the previous page, this is a compound like uh, you know, A and B, and this is a compound like C and D. And if you look at how things switch, A and C are switching places so that you end up with, this is C and B, and this is A and D. A, B, turns to AD and CB. If you're looking at these, which one does that look the most like? Oops, sorry. It looks just like this. A compound forming another compound, two positive switch. This was an example of a double displacement reaction. This one is also a double displacement reaction. A, B, C, D. Hydrogen and barium switch places. Now, H with OH, HOH is H2O. Okay, and then you have BA with SO4. This is also double displacement. And then this one down here, if you look at it, we have a carbon compound, some combination of C's and H's, reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. So this part, reacting with oxygen to go CO2 and water, there's one type of reaction where that happens every time, and it is like this, a carbon compound reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. That's what's called a combustion reaction. So this was a combustion reaction. 
So I just went back and identified those reactions. But what I want you to do right now, okay, is, uh, and if you have this from your workbook or a lab, that's good. Um, but I can't. I don't think I can really show both at the same time uh, without being able to see the uh, the equations. But here are. I guess I'll leave two of them on there. Um, here are four equations. They're already balanced, so you can see that there are coefficients in there. You don't need to worry about that. I just want you to identify, are these synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions, single displacement, double displacement, or combustion? Okay, if you want to pause the video, answer what type of reactions they are. Okay, here we go. We have a combination of C's and H's reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 in water. Just like I did at the last example problem, and like you can see up here, if you have some carbon compound, some combination of C's and H's reacting with oxygen to form CO2 in water, that's a combustion reaction. Okay, that's a combustion reaction. So down here, this is combustion. Next up, we have an element, and then we have another element, and those are combining to form one compound. So one thing and another thing combine to form a single product. Hopefully you recognize that is something like this. An element plus another element gives you a compound. That's what's happening here. That's called synthesis. Next we have magnesium, which is an element, plus CO2, which is a compound, giving you carbon, which is an element, and then you have magnesium oxide, which is a compound. So we have an element and a compound giving you an element and a compound. And if you look, Mg and C are switching places. So Mg is going to be with O, and C is going to be by itself. This is exactly like we have, right, here, an element and a compound turns into an element and a compound. The A and the B are switching places. It's the same thing that's happening in R number three. This is called single displacement. Finally, we have a compound, aluminum oxide, and it's turning into individual aluminum atoms and oxygen molecules. So one compound is breaking down into multiple things. We would call this decomposing, or just like we have here, one compound breaking down into multiple things. This is a decomposition. decomposition reaction, okay? So you want to make sure that you study the types of reactions chart, okay? There's sort of no way around memorizing this. And we practice identifying types of reactions this way, just one way to categorize them. Um, we also learned how to balance chemical equations. We learned about the law of conservation of mass coefficients and how you count and recount. And the big thing about balancing equations is that you must have the same number of each type of element on both sides of the reaction arrow. Balancing equations, it's, uh, it's just something you need to practice and you get the hang of it and soon you feel like it's just sort of like a fun little riddle. Anyhow, good work. Keep it up. Let me know if you need anything. This is Mr. Rosen. I am out.